Muchachos, e muchachas. So I'm not sure if these are answers or if they're attempting to be answers, but since the Nashville bombing, there have been some developments that just are kind of strange and peculiar and questionable. First of all, I hope you like my setup. This is my stage set for my recording of the Chester Bennington and Chris Cornell documentary I am currently making. The last time I talked to you was on Christmas Day. What we had found out was that the blast had happened in Nashville downtown. There was a countdown and that there were human remains that were uncovered throughout the debris. Since then, supposedly, allegedly, the Nashville bomber had been identified through DNA. It was discovered that he signed over an entire house to a young lady. There are some supposed reports out there that the Nashville bomber's neighbor recalled some very strange conversations. And then further, there seemed to be some sort of copycat attempts that were not as successful. Stay right there. We're gonna run right through it. So you can call me a skeptic when it comes to whitening systems such as strips and professional dental treatments because number one, it's expensive, it takes too long, and my teeth end up very sensitive and hurt after the process. And so I just think, no, I'm not even gonna give into it. I'm not even gonna try it out. But recently I have given in to try Snow Whitening System. It comes with a light mouthpiece, three whitening wands, one extra strength whitening wand, and a tooth shade progress grater. All you have to do is brush your teeth, apply the serum, whiten, then rinse. It's even safe to use on caps, veneers, braces, and crowns and bridges. 97% of the people who use it see results just after one use. 100% see long-lasting results after just 21 days. And I can say that I am visibly seeing how on track I am to progress just as well. To get one of these kits, go to my link below and use the code Let It Snow to get 25% off of your order. Get those chompers looking great by trying Snow Whitening System today. All right, let's jump right into it. So, as I stated, the last we talked, the explosion had just happened on Christmas morning. There was really no further details, but the whole thing is just very strange because apparently, the FBI and the investigation is nearing a tail end and it's just very fast, right? It's, it's just a really fast investigation to be so conclusive. According to Tennessean.com, tips, DNA, and vehicle identification number led law enforcement to ID of the Christmas bomber. And it states, DNA analysis, a vehicle identification number, and tips from public helped lead law enforcement to the 63-year-old Nashville man responsible for the Christmas bombing. David Roche, the director of the Bureau of Investigation, said that these details were key to identifying Anthony Q. Warner as the man who intentionally exploded a recreational vehicle early Friday on historic 2nd Avenue in Nashville. Authorities say Warner died in the bombing and acted alone. I just want to say that there were no casualties with, besides reportedly, allegedly, Anthony Q. Warner. But other than that, there were no casualties due to the bombing, which is good. But I just, it it's so strange that within, it's, 20, it's now day three since the blast, we're just, it's just, is this acceptable that we, is it 100% known three days later that he acted alone? I mean, how, how did they reach this conclusion? I wish there was a lot more transparency as to how they would conclude that. It just seems very, very fast. So it continues, during a virtual news conference Monday, Rush answered questions from the media about the role in his state agency played in the case that shocked the city and drew national attention. Federal, state, and local law enforcement are working together to figure out what happened and why. 
And then apparently one of Anthony Q. Warner's neighbors came forward and reported a peculiar conversation that they had had and reported some comments that now seem a bit questionable retrospectively looking back. So this is coming from the AP. Bomber to neighbor, the world is never going to forget me. It seemed like a friendly chat between neighbors only after a bomb exploded in downtown Nashville on Christmas morning could Rick Laud grasp the sinister meaning behind the neighbor's smiling remark at the city and the rest of the world would never forget him. Laud told the Associated Press on Monday that he was speechless when he had learned that the authorities identified the 63-year-old neighbor, Anthony Quinn Warner, as the man suspected of detonating a bomb that killed himself injured three other people and damaged dozens of buildings. Lloyd said that he saw Warner standing at his mailbox then a week before Christmas and pulled over his car to talk. After asking how Warner's elderly mother was doing, Lloyd said he casually asked, is Santa going to bring you anything good for Christmas? Warner smiled and said, oh yeah, Nashville and the world is never going to forget me, Lloyd recalled. Laud said he didn't think much of the remark and thought Warner only meant something good was going to happen for him financially. Nothing about this guy raised any red flags, Laud said. He was just quiet. Laud said Warner sometimes did not respond when he and other neighbors waved to him, but he said that he did not take it personally. I knew that it was just a recluse, he said. Warner left behind clues that suggest he planned the bombing and intended to kill himself, but a clear motive remains elusive. It continues, we hope to get an answer. Sometimes it's just not possible, David Rush, the director of Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, said Monday in an interview on NBC's Today Show. The best way to find a motive is to talk to the individual. We will not be able to do that in this case. Okay, pause, pause. It's... I, look, we're only three days from the incident, right? So, I mean, how how can we just conclude it this quick? We hope to get an answer. Sometimes it's just not possible. So are we concluding that the investigation is just going to cease? Like, is that it? Is it? And another thing is, if you go back a video, or the video that I posted on Christmas of the Nashville blast, if you go to that video, I included some commentary from Catherine Hetheridge, who is a correspondent on CBS News. What I recall from what she stated, there were some materials that were, they were very particular and advanced. And I still question, where did he get these materials? How did he get these materials? Who did he know? I mean, do we need to put Natalie Denise agency on, on top of this investigation? I mean, it just... It just seems so fast to assume that number one, he was he acted alone, and that was there was nobody coordinating with him. And then it's just not answered uh, about how this man got such elaborate and advanced material to make his bombs. I just, you know, am I going crazy here? Anyway, let me continue. A review of his financial transactions also uncovered purchases of potential bomb making components. The official said. So see, that's exactly what I mean. Just potential bomb making components. This bomb destroyed dozens of brick and mortar buildings. It has to have contained such an advanced way of composing this bomb device that it would cause so much destruction. How did he know to build a bomb? Did they, did they investigate his hard drives? Did they go to his search history? Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is three days after the investigation. These are some very important questions to ask. Warner had recently given away a vehicle and told the person he gave it to that he had been diagnosed with cancer, though it was unclear whether he indeed had cancer, the official said. Investigators used some items collected from the vehicle, including a hat and gloves to match Warner's DNA, and DNA was taken from one of his family members, the official said. And of course, the official could not discuss the matter publicly and spoke to the AP on condition of anonymity. 
Warner also apparently gave away his home in Antioch, a Nashville suburb, to a Los Angeles woman a month before the bombing. A property record dated November 25th indicates Warner transferred the home to the woman in exchange for no money after living there for decades. The woman's signature is not on that document. Oh, here we have it. Warner had worked as a computer consultant for Nashville real estate agent Steve Friedrich, who told the AP in a text message that Warner had said he was retiring earlier this month. Officials said that Warner had not been on their radar before Christmas. A law enforcement report released Monday shows that Warner's only arrest was for 1978 marijuana-related charge. It does appear that the intent was more destruction than death, but again, all still speculation at this point as we continue our investigation with, with all our partners, Ross Shed. So allegedly, Anthony wrote a letter to the young woman he left the entire house to, and he stated somewhere in his letter two things, that he was spending Christmas in the woods with his dogs and also warned that the basement of the home ga he gave her for free was not normal. And this quote states, the attic has plywood and lighting, take a look. The basement is not normal, take a look. Woof, woof, Julio. Now look, I don't know about you guys, but if I ever got any sort of indication that there was something not normal in any part of the house, I, I would have been gone. Goodbye. So some other ideas that were going around the internet were some pretty valid theories. The positioning of the detonation right in front of the AT&T data center. There were a lot of suspicions that this could have been done in relation to a certain Domino's pizza voting system. You know what I mean? But of course, these are just ideas for the time being. Okay, taking this straight from the FBI based in Memphis, this is allegedly Anthony Quinn Warner. And this was a most recent picture of Anthony Quinn Warner. So two days after the Nashville bombing incident, there were two weird additional incidents that occurred. Number one being in New York, apparently there was a bomb scare against the Empire State Building. But now NYPD is saying that that was a false alarm. Coming from Borough Park 24, it states the NYPD found a bomb threat to be a false alarm after someone called 911 just after 11 a.m. and claimed that a bomb would go off at the Empire State Building on Sunday at noon. The NYPD's bomb squad immediately responded to the scene and determined the threat to be unfounded according to the NYPD, which has said it would have been a keeping an eye on critical communication infrastructure locations in the city after a recreational vehicle exploded on 2nd Avenue in downtown Nashville. So fortunately, that was a false alarm and very glad that it was. And then there was a weird incident that happened in Tennessee again. On Highway 111, it was cleared after authorities investigated a suspicious vehicle. This is coming from News Channel 9 ABC. Sus Squatchy, I think it's the Squatchy County, sorry if I butchered that. County Sheriff's Office confirms Tennessee Highway 111 is clear after being shut down due to a suspicious vehicle parked near a cell tower. Now, apparently, this vehicle was parked near a cell tower and it was playing some of the same or similar voice recordings or music and clocking it back to Nashville. It is alleged that the Nashville bomber was playing the song Downtown and then, of course, the countdown. This is the press release from Sasquatchy County Sheriff's Department. It stated on the date 12-27-2020, the Sasquatchy County Sheriff's Office was notified of a suspicious vehicle parked on the side of Highway 111 near the cell phone tower. Upon arrival, patrol officers closed the roadway for precautionary measures after a lengthy report. After a lengthy period, it was determined that the vehicle is not a threat and there were no explosives. The scene was cleared and the highway was reopened. Sheriff Coy M. Swinger would like to thank the following agencies for assistance during this investigation. With all that being said and done, everything's just so strange, especially the Nashville bomber. I, I just, 
I mean, I come from a very analytical reverse engineering type of mind. So when I see stories that have lots of holes in it and people are coming quick to a conclusion, of course, that always sets off a red flag for me, but that's just my opinion. Guys, what are your thoughts on this whole situation, the investigation and the additional threats and concerns that happened in New York and another part of Tennessee? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to touch my like button, subscribe button, and check out the links in my description below to support the show. As you guys know, I am no Tucker Carlson. I'm a small fish in the big sea. So any gift, whether reoccurring or one time, is greatly appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one.